I want to start with the question, what is fear? We've all experienced it. You may even be experiencing it at this very moment, but have you ever observed it? Have you ever examined it, what it is and how it arises? Because I think in order to overcome fear, rather than to be overcome by fear, it has to be understood. So back to this question of what is fear? We experience fear as a feeling. That is, we literally feel it physically in our body, and it can include any number of sensations, typically an increased heart rate, perhaps a tightness in breathing. Our muscles might tighten up as well, or become weak and shaky. We might also experience some perspiration or perhaps some dizziness. Depending on the degree of fear, we might only experience some of these sensations or all of them, and perhaps some others as well. But the point is that it seems to be primarily experienced in the body. It's something that we feel, and it can feel quite unsettling at times. Now, in my own observation, it would seem that we experience two different types of fear, what I would call biological fear and psychological fear. And as far as what they feel like, there's no distinction. The difference is what gives rise to the feeling. Biological fear is a natural instinct that we all have, and you can observe this all throughout nature in all the various creatures. It's essentially a survival mechanism. So when we're faced with danger, we're able to respond very quickly and automatically without a thought. If there's an immediate danger, any time spent thinking about what to do only increases the risk of harm. Often there is no time to think, you have to act fast. If you had to consider what to do, if you had to weigh it out in your mind, if you had to assess the situation and formulate a plan, if you had to do all of that, probably by the time you come up with some response, you might already be injured or even dead. So instead, we have this biological mechanism wired into us that overrides the rational, logical thinking part of the mind and just automatically reacts. And in that moment, we either defend ourselves or run away or become completely still so as not to be seen. So this kind of biological fear is extremely beneficial. It's necessary for survival. This is not something that we want to do away with, but rather it's something that we should be grateful for. But the other kind of fear that we experience most frequently, most commonly, is psychological fear. It doesn't require any immediate danger. In fact, often there is no immediate danger. This feeling of fear is based on some imagined future scenario, something that may or may not happen, but is not happening currently, which is to say that this sense of fear is not in response to reality, but to imagination. It's a response to thought. And this kind of psychological fear causes a great deal of unnecessary suffering. It prevents us from simply enjoying life in the moment. And sometimes it can be quite debilitating, preventing us from doing all kinds of things. In addition, it can also create a number of unnecessary problems, which perhaps I'll talk more about some other time. But this kind of fear that we tend to experience most of the time is arising in response to thought, in response to imagination. We imagine some danger or some painful or difficult or embarrassing situation that is not actually occurring in this moment. It's something which may or may not occur at some future moment, but it's not currently happening. We're just creating this story in our mind of what could happen. And often it's the worst possible thing that we can imagine. And what's interesting is that our biological system responds to that thought, to that imagined scenario, the same way that it would respond to an actual immediate danger. It doesn't know the difference. And so we get the same reaction, the same physical sensations, the racing heartbeat, the shallow breathing, and whatever other sensations you might experience. But unlike facing a real immediate danger, there isn't much that we can do in this situation. The thing that we're afraid of hasn't happened yet. So how do we respond to that? What kind of action can we take? 
when you sense that there is danger just around the corner, your body begins to prepare, your muscles start to tense up, uh, your heart rate increases, and so on. All of this is to prepare you to defend yourself or to run away. But what if the danger isn't around the corner? What if it's far off in the uncertain future? What if you don't even know how far off it is or whether it will even occur, but you still anticipate it? Which means you're always tense, you're always on edge, you're always uneasy. To make matters worse, most of the things that we worry about never actually happen, and so we can go on worrying indefinitely. And what good does that do us? Now, as I said, this kind of fear is arising in response to thought, and the body can't seem to distinguish between reality and imagination, so the reaction is the same. But we can make this distinction. We can observe how our fear is arising in response to thought, to some imagined future event. So this kind of fear is rooted in thought. If you examine just about any fear that you may have, you will find that it arises and is sustained by thinking, by imagination. And mostly it is thought concerning the future. What will happen? What will others think? What might I lose? What is the worst possible thing that could go wrong? And any thought about the future is imaginary because the future has not yet arrived. So the best we can do is speculate, we can guess, we can make all kinds of predictions and presumptions, but all of that is imagination, and it requires a great deal of thinking. As I said, fear is primarily in response to imagination, in response to events and situations which only exist in imagination. Which is to say that in this moment, right here and now, those events and situations don't exist. And we might observe that here in this present moment, there is no immediate danger. We are safe in this moment, and so there is nothing to fear. Now, it may seem at times that our fear is to some degree in response to what is actually occurring in the present moment. There is always some potential danger out there. There is always the possibility that we could fall victim to that danger. For example, you might be thinking that right now, at this very moment, there is a virus going around that some people are dying from. The reality may be that at this moment there is such a virus, and it would seem that this is the cause of our fear, but if we really look more closely at it, what we may find is that the fear itself is in response to something else, something imagined, something anticipated some possible future scenario. Now, first of all, you may not even have the virus, in which case the fear is that you might contract it at some future time. So again, we're talking about some imagined future scenario. Or it may be that you have already contracted it, in which case you're not afraid of contracting it because that's already happened but there may still be fear there in that moment. In fact, in either situation, the fear may be the same, but what is it that really frightens us? What is the worst thing that could possibly happen? The worst thing that can possibly happen is that we could die. So really what we're afraid of is death. And I'm pretty confident in saying that this event has not yet occurred. If you're watching this video right now, I can only assume that you're very much alive at this moment which is to say that this fear is arising from imagination. We're imagining our own death. It's not our current experience. And it's often death which frightens us most regardless of the situation, even though our death is something which has not yet occurred. And we cannot know in this present moment whether or not that fear will come to pass in the way that we imagine. We may not contract the virus, or we may contract it and recover. And so we might find that what we fear does not even occur, and we will have spent all this time, all this thought and energy consumed in fear for nothing. And of course, if we do happen to die from it, our fear will not have done anything to prevent that. The reality that we tend to forget is that we will eventually die at some point. That we can be certain of. 
every one of us will someday die, but how or when, we do not know, and so we're left only with our imagination. Whether you die from some virus, or from something else entirely, or simply from old age, whatever the case, it is inevitably going to happen at some point. Death is simply a natural part of life, and yet perhaps our greatest fear is death. And despite how much we may fear it, that fear has never prevented it. No amount of fear can prevent death. So what good is it? If death is inevitable and fear cannot prevent it, then why spend so much energy fearing it? And if we spend our lives fearing death, it's very difficult to simply enjoy this life while it lasts. It's very difficult to be present here in the moment because our attention is drifting off into imagination. We don't know how or when we will die or what comes afterward, but what we can know is that here in this moment we can be very miserable because we aren't making the best of the current situation. We aren't appreciating life in this moment. We aren't being present with it. All of our attention is in the future, or rather, in our imagination of the future. We can observe how fear prevents us from being present. We can observe how fear interferes with how we engage in the present moment. We can observe how our attention is elsewhere, caught up in imagination, drifting off into thought. And we can observe how this creates so much unnecessary suffering. But at the same time, simply by noticing this, we can bring the attention back to this moment. We can redirect our attention to whatever is taking place here in this moment. We can notice the breath, the sensations of the body. We can notice the sounds occurring around us. We can notice the shapes and colors, the scent, the temperature. Whatever is taking place right here, wherever you happen to be, you can give your attention to that. And automatically the attention comes out from the mind, like the sun coming out from the clouds. And there is clarity, there is presence. And here in this present moment, there is no fear. If one is fully present in the here and now, there is no fear. Fear requires future. Fear requires thought. Fear requires imagination. But to be fully present in the here and now, attentive to what is happening in this present moment, there is nothing to give rise to fear. If you find value in this content, be sure to like, share, and subscribe.